Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you have joined us for our Christmas Eve online service with Concord Trinity United Methodist Church. It's so good to be connected, even if it's virtual, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord. We have been doing a Christmas offering during this month to support missions to help those who've been impacted by COVID-19 throughout 2020. And we are so thankful for those who've already sent in their Christmas offerings, and it's not too late to go ahead and send them in. One third of our Christmas offering will go to Feed My People, which is a local food pantry. One third will go to Home Sweet Home, which is a ministry in St. Louis that works to help people who are homeless transition into homes by making sure that they have furniture and the basic supplies that they need. And then one third will stay here in our church so that we can help through our missions budget those locally who've been impacted that might come forward with many different needs. And so we are so thankful for your generosity and sharing with that Christmas offering. We'd like to invite everybody to come back in January and watch our worship sermon series, Ask, Seek, Knock. It's going to be looking at some of the tough questions of faith that you were asked to submit a few weeks ago. Pastor Mary has picked out several, and we will be addressing those in January. So we hope that you will come back and watch that. But for right now, I pray that you will open your heart and your mind to receive the Christ child in once again, and to remember that into the darkness of this world, the light of the world was born. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, people of God, the light has come into the world. We light again the Advent candles, which have helped lead us to evening's Christmas Eve worship, including the candles of hope, love, joy, and peace. Oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity, the Christ candle. This candle reminds us of, of the light of Christ, which came into our lives and around the world on that holy night. With the company of heaven and with the sounds of great joy, you come to us. This is the time of light and resplendent joy. We thank God for bringing life and his light into our world. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The evangelist Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels. Glory, peace on earth, and goodwill. John declared that this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. Let us pray. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thanks for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Amen.
friends, I'm Maddie. And I'm Jack. And we would love to introduce you to our frog friends. Hello! I am Ava. And this is my sister, Sophia. Hello, everyone. So I received Ava as a birthday gift when I was two years old, and Sophia arrived shortly after. Their big personalities haven't changed at all over the years. For those of you at home who are keeping track, Ava and Sophia have been in the family longer than me. And I think they might have something special cooked up for Christmas Eve. Ah, yes. We're doing a Christmas pageant word for word from the scriptures. Not word for word. We cut some and we paraphrased a lot of it. And it's going to be the best Christmas pageant ever. Places and Fabians, places! Okay, first I will call on all of you frogs and you will tell me if you are ready. We are all ready, Ava. Are you ready? We're supposed to get us live animals. Where are the animals? Kill the sheep! Ava, that is a dog. Budget guts. Or you were lazy. I need my three camels. Oh, here they are. There's that is a mouse and there's only one. No, there's it. Oh, there's only one. There used to be three. Oh no, our sheep ate our camels. Just based off what I'm hearing, it sounds like you need, guys need some help. We've got some people that can help you out if you think you need it. No, no. Everything is perfectly fine here. Be quiet, Ava. Yes, we need help. When the angel Gabriel came down to Mary, he said, Rejoice, favorite one. The Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will become um, pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I'm not married? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is born, it will be holy. He will be called God's son. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let me be with just as you have said. Then the angel left. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared. declared that everyone throughout, throughout the empire should be counted counted. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth to David's city called Bethlehem. He went together with Mary who was promised to him in mar marriage and who was pregnant. Well, while the, they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her first child, a son, were wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Announcement to shepherds. Nearby shepherds were living in fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. 
Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and peace on earth. The shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Merry Christmas! Merry, Merry Christmas! That was wonderful. They did a great job. Yeah, that was so great. They're talking about the humans, not the animals. Oh, wait. Hey, look! There's one of the missing mice! You guys, wait. What if the mice are just roaming around everywhere and the dog didn't actually eat them? We hope you and your family are filled with the love, joy, peace, and happiness that comes from Jesus Christ this season. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Find the other mouse. As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you in the opening moments of silence to lift up the joys that you have in your life right now and to give thanks to God for them. Then I'll continue in prayer, leading us into the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh, gracious God, you are so good, so loving, so compassionate. We give you thanks and we celebrate all of the wonderful things that you do in our life and in our world to help us to live more fully, to help us to be who you have created us to be. It's easy sometimes for us to hide behind masks that keep us from living into the fullness of being who we are as followers of Jesus in the world, of being people of light in the midst of darkness, people of hope, people who love one another regardless of who you are or where you come from. God, take away the masks and allow us to be who you have created us to be through Christ. Help us to share the good news that Christ the Savior is born born in our hearts, born in our lives, born for all the world. Help us to be ones that share that good news with others. We ask, God, that in this season of joy and celebration, that you will be with those who are grieving and hurting, that you will comfort them with your peace and your presence, that you'll remind them that hope is forever. We are so thankful for the gift of Jesus, for your willingness to enter into our world and experience our pain and suffering and to show us a better way of living and loving together in community with you and with one another. And in community, we now pray together the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Tonight we are going to read Luke 2, 1 through 20. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a, a decree went out from Emperor to Augustus that all the world should be registered. It was the first registration. It was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was been expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there is no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds, living in the fields, watching over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified! But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what has been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed as what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying, praising God in all that they heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and welcome and Merry Christmas. My name is Mary Weaver. I'm the lead pastor here at Concord Trinity United Methodist Church. Christmas is here 
And although I would much rather be seeing you all in person, I can't help but be thrilled to be able to celebrate Christmas with you, even if virtually. I look upon this last year, one that held some momentous events in my own life, my oldest daughter graduating high school and going off to college, my family moving across the state, me becoming a lead pastor, and for the most part, those events are overshadowed by a pandemic that has forced us to change almost everything we do and horrifically has claimed thousands of lives. So let's be honest, Christmas looks different this year. It feels different. The traditions we know and love either can't happen or are severely modified. And that can be sad, it can be worrisome, it's beyond frustrating, and it can make us downright angry. Angry about the things we've lost and had to change. Angry about the people we've lost this year the hugs and handshakes we've missed out on, the family and social gatherings we've had to cancel. And instead, we have resorted to Zoom meetings and freezing cold conversations outside and elbow bumps instead of fist bumps, which, by the way, I don't make sense to me because if you touch elbow to elbow with someone, you're literally about a foot from their face. But anyway... It's sad and scary and maddening. But I implore you, don't hide behind those everyday masks. I'm not talking about our COVID masks. Please keep wearing those whenever you're around other people. I'm talking about the metaphorical masks we tend to wear around people to hide our true selves. Don't let those masks stop you from knowing and experiencing what's really going on around you. You need to feel those emotions, absolutely. Don't deny your feelings, but you must not hide behind those masks of fear and doubt and anger and sadness. Tell someone how you're doing. Vent, complain, and talk about what's going on with you so that you don't hide behind a mask because you don't need to. On this night, 2,000 years ago, Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem and delivered their son, their son who is the son of the Most High, the son of God. In his true self, Jesus came into this world. Jesus came to us, God's ultimate gift. And because Jesus was born, we too can be our true selves. We don't have to hide behind any mask. In our scripture passage today, a lot is going on. Mary and Joseph are traveling back to Bethlehem, Mary being almost full term. They arrive and because everyone is back in town for the census too, there are no rooms available. And so they have to deliver their baby in some animal stalls. Meanwhile, there are some shepherds nearby working in the fields, minding their own business, and they get a chorus of angels serenading them. Mary and Zechariah each got one angel to visit them, but these shepherds, they get a multitude. The shepherds are told that born in the city of David, Bethlehem, which is where David was, was from, is the one who is the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. This announcement, along with the army of angels singing, is a momentous event in the lives of these shepherds. They're told the sign of all of this is that they will find a baby wrapped up and lying in a manger, which would have been a pretty rare sign if you think about it. Mangers are feeding troughs for animals. So finding a baby using one as a crib would have been pretty indicative. So the shepherds go, and then when they get to town and they find the baby, they tell everyone what the angels told them about Jesus, including Mary and Joseph. Typically in biblical times when a child is born, the local mu musicians in town would have gathered at the home and, and to greet the baby they would have sang simple music but this ceremony for Jesus wasn't or couldn't be carried out. 
It's a lovely thought that instead of town musicians, the angels sang. And of course they did, because this is the incarnation. God comes into humanity in the most vulnerable state possible. The emphasis here in our story is on the true humanity of the divine one who shared our life by being born, by then growing up, and then ultimately dying on a cross. Within our Christian faith, we can find comfort in the fact that we have a God who knows this life we live because he lived it too. Now, as a part of our life now, currently, we have social media, which I'm sure my hunch is that Jesus is thrilled he didn't have to deal with. Both of my teenage daughters have Instagram accounts, as do I, so I can see what they're doing on there. If you don't know what Instagram is, it's similar to Facebook in that it's a social networking app where you post things online about pretty much whatever you want. But Instagram focuses on pictures and videos. You can put pictures of yourself, your friends, what you're eating for lunch, really anything you want. When my oldest was home from college for Thanksgiving, she had some pictures that she was trying to decide on which to post. Most of them were of her and some friends from school. And they were really cute pictures. And she asked me at one point my thoughts between two specific pictures. Now, I'm honored whenever my daughters ask my opinion of what pictures they should post on their accounts. I realize they don't have to do that, and they know I'm going to be honest with them. In this case, the first picture was of my daughter with two of her friends. The other picture was of my daughter and two other friends. And she asked me, which do you like better, this one or this one, this one or this one? She flipped back and forth between the two on her phone like the eye doctor does when he's testing your vision. Which is better, this one or this one? But to me, there really wasn't that much difference between the two pictures. My daughter looked beautiful in both. Her friends looked nice too, so I didn't care. But then I said something that triggered my daughter. I said, they both look the same. What does it matter which one you choose? Well, let's just say it matters tremendously. You see, in the social media world, there is a push to not post anything unless it matches the aesthetic of your account. Even then, for some people, if their post doesn't get enough likes, they take it down because then it just becomes an embarrassment. There just aren't as many candid pictures on social media anymore. There has to be the perfect setup for a picture if you're going to post it. And unfortunately, all of this can become very toxic and people end up putting on a false face or a mask. This happens on Facebook just as much as on Instagram. We don't wanna put up something imperfect because that might mean that we are imperfect. There is such pressure from the outside that it then becomes pressure from the inside. We get too wrapped up into what other people think and we end up putting on a mask, covering up who we truly are, dirt and all. From our scripture today, we see of all the characters, the shepherds had the most and best opportunity to wear masks, even if they didn't have Instagram. Shepherds were a dirty lot. They literally slept alongside their livestock. But they were also a despised group of people during this time. I know we see shepherds as kind and pastoral, but in Jesus' time, they were regarded as lower-class, irresponsible thieves who grazed their sheep on the land of other people. Shepherds were also despised because they could not observe the purity laws of hand-washing as and other rules and regulations to keep clean. But shepherds were important to that culture. Sheep were the most important domestic animal in the Near East. They were a major animal used in sacrifices for the Jews. They provided the people with meat and milk, fat, wool, horns, but they became lost easily and they were completely defenseless. So the shepherd's work was one of diligence and endurance for these sheep. The search for pasture and water 
for the herd sometimes took them far from home, which means the shepherds settled for minimal food, harsh weather at times, and primitive lodging, sometimes accompanied by the danger from wild animals like bears and lions and wolves. The shepherds had to keep alert for wandering and stray sheep, counting the herd often. And if animals did go missing, the shepherd's job was to recover them. Shepherds were fairly simple people, very important, but simple. They lived a simple life, not an easy one, but a simple one, no frills at all. Shepherds were mostly overlooked and underappreciated, and they were considered dirty all the time. Although their role was important, shepherds were outcasts from their respectable society. If anyone needed to wear a mask to hide behind, it was these guys. But they didn't. When the angels came, the shepherds could have worn a mask of fear, stopping them from going to Bethlehem to see Jesus. They could have worn a mask of denial, forcing them to bury their heads and count the sheep one more time. They could have worn a mask of self-doubt, preventing them from finding their Savior because they were so dirty and impure. But they did none of these things. After the angels left them, the shepherds looked at each other and said, let's go to Bethlehem. And they did with haste. They completely left their post, their livelihood, to go see Jesus. We don't know how many shepherds there were. If you believe our nativity scenes now, there were at least two or three, but they all go. No one stays behind to watch over the sheep. They all go completely as they are, exposed and dirty and real, leaving behind who they think they are to reveal to Jesus who they truly are. We admire the humility of these shepherds who came as they were to see the baby. No masks at all. When it comes to who we are in life, at work, at church, with our families, we too have lots of opportunities to wear all kinds of masks and cover up our true selves. Our everyday masks are worn to hide who we truly are and how we feel. Our masks hide our fear of the unknown, our false happiness and contentment, our anxiety about our job or family, our loneliness in this big and brutal world. Our masks are to help keep us keep up with the Joneses. So often our, in our minds, we, we don't measure up to others, and so we put on masks so that we feel like we measure up. We're somehow always in competition with each other. In a relationship to church, there's this idea that you, you better get all dressed up in order to come and worship. You better look nice, even though you cut someone off on the way to church and flip them the you-know-what. But what does it matter what you look like out on the in, outside if you are ugly on the inside? What kind of a mask is that? And just because someone doesn't look perfect on the outside, it doesn't automatically mean they're ugly on the inside. But I think our most common mask, especially in our society, is that we get wrapped up in our secular world and our busy lives, and we forget that we have a whole spiritual side that should direct how we live. It's a mask we often wear at Christmas time in preparation for food and presents and decorations and cards, and we forget why we do it all in the first place. It's like the innkeeper in our story. He is often portrayed as a villain, but don't be too hard on him. He represents the majority of us. He's not a bad man. He's just a busy one. Have you ever been so busy, especially during this time, that you have no room for the most important guest of all? The good news, the gospel story, comes to those in their raw, exposed, and true selves. Here we have a pregnant teenage Mary traveling when almost due, 
There's no lodging available because of the registration, and either Joseph's family can't or won't take them in. So they set up in the stable with the animals and hay, and Mary gives birth there. They use a feeding trough, a manger, to lay Jesus in, his very first crib, and Mary has to be exhausted. But they are soon visited by shepherds, strangers who have a wild tale about being visited by angels, but they talk about her son. That's a pretty raw and exposed story in itself. We can think about the splendor that God might have come in, but God was born in hay and dirt. The crib, a manger. The visitors, outcasts. This is a story ultimately of salvation. It is God's intervention to save God's people, all God's people. And all God's people are invited to this come as you are gathering. No need to take a shower. No need to wear fancy clothes, no masks needed. Just come as you are. Amen. The first Noel the angel did say Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay In fields where they lay keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night that was so deep Tonight, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we get to celebrate that with Holy Communion. If you uh, were able to go through our light display tonight and pick up your elements, we will use those in communion tonight. If you were not able to come through our light display, that's absolutely fine. I would like to uh, offer up a prayer for all of us tonight. So let's pray. Gracious and loving God, Lord, I thank you so much for your ultimate gift in your son, the ultimate grace that you have given us and bestowed upon us in him. God, in this time of year, in this time where we reflect on the past, we have been through so much. And God, we now come together, even virtually. We gather here and worship you. We come to you and we focus on you and what you have given us. God, we lift up those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who are hungry. God, we lift them up to you. We know that you never leave our side, ever, and that you're just waiting for us to turn around and face you. God, in this time, we we try to face you We love you. We thank you for all the blessings you have given us. And we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. 
As we go to communion, I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer. Prepare your heart and mind for this meal where we celebrate Christ coming into this world. I invite you to join in the liturgy as printed on the screen below. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for this world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world until Christ returns in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen. If you received your communion elements today, you simply pull back that top seal and reveal the wafer beneath. You then pull back the second seal to reveal the juice. Jesus was born was a lot like our world. 
God seemed to be absent and silent, leaving us lonely. Violence and war destroyed the peace. Unfairness and injustice were everywhere. Darkness seemed to be winning. Hopeless despair had dimmed the light of God's revealing. And out of that cosmic darkness, on a cold winter night in Bethlehem, God changed everything and entered the world as the baby Jesus. Our loneliness was cured by his presence. In Jesus, God shows God's love for each one of us. God's peace shines onto our war and violence. God's justice shines on our unfairness and injustice. Jesus, God's light and hope, shines into the world's darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. And now, 2,000 years later, the light continues to spread. I encourage you now to light a candle you may have at home, or if you picked up a glow stick today as a part of our drive through light display, go ahead and bend that stick so that it will glow for you now.
I want you to take a second and look at your light and any that might be around in your family. See the light of, of each and every one of you. See how beautiful each individual light is and know how extraordinary each individual light is. Don't ever forget that you have this light inside of you as well and don't ever be afraid to share it. In a second, I'm going to give the benediction, which is our closing blessing, and our Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve service will be over. But after the benediction, if you do have a lit candle, please carefully blow it out, because no one wants a Christmas gift of hot wax blown on them. The babe of Bethlehem was God come to earth to be among us. And because of Jesus and the good news that Jesus brings with him, we can remove our masks. We can be our true selves and we will always have enough light for the darkness. Christ be the Lord of your life in the days ahead, bringing you peace, hope, and joy. May we always remember that God beckons us with all of God's might. May we remember that Jesus is the ultimate gift given to us and because of him, no masks are needed. May God bless you and keep you, and Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.